Okay, today we got a letter in from uh, a young lady who has a co-worker who's getting on her last nerve. And this is pretty much the situation. She says, there's a work colleague who got engaged in January. To provide context, she has a four-year-old son and he has two daughters. Uh, her son is by somebody she wasn't married to. His daughters are by two different women he wasn't married to, right? So they had a nice gathering at Ruth, Ruth Chris's Steakhouse with family and friends. They flew in from Atlanta, Florida, D.C., and locally, wherever locally is, to announce their engagement. And she posted pictures all over Facebook. She was understandably excited. and She had a beautiful ring that she showed to us when she got to work. Okay. The problem is that every day since then, so this is January, we in March now, she talks, aka brags, about her engagement, about how she's going to have a fancy dress, a special black cake, and what bridal stores are beneath her to shop in, etc. When we asked about the wedding date, she stated that it would take place in the summer of next year, 2018, and then she sternly told a co-worker that she better not ask her again. The delay in the wedding is because she's working on purchasing a home. She is the breadwinner now that her man took a lower paying job so that he would have time to work on setting up his business. They plan to marry once the home is purchased. She recently announced that they'd found a wedding venue. The only reason I know so much about this, because you know I was wondering. So she says the only reason I know so much about this is because she talks about it constantly at work. What do you think of this situation? I'm always happy when people find true love, but the constant bragging is off-putting. And so she asked for my opinion. Now keep in mind, it's just my opinion. A lot of you probably gonna disagree, who gives a shit? The bottom line for me is, you bitch, you're supposed to be working, okay? You're supposed to be working. You're not supposed to be thinking about, talking about, or working on your wedding on company time. If I were her supervisor, I would correct her and tell her that. Because while she's doing all that, see, she's also distracting the other employees from doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, it's great that you get married, but people get married every day all over the world, and it's no big deal because, you know, five years later, five minutes later, they divorce. So big whoop de doo But, you know, right now she's excited about it, and she's going a little overboard probably because she wanted to be married to the first dude that she had the little boy by, and it didn't happen. Now, in my book, The Black Church, Where Women Pray and Men Pray, P-R-E-Y, I talked about the phenomenon of black women who uh, are all stuck on being married. Even if the guy that they're marrying is somehow beneath them, you know, not really living up to standards and kind of cruising, they still want to be with him and they negotiate, they, uh, what do you call it, um, adjust their standards down in order to have this mystical magical husband and you know I really hope that that isn't the case here but I'm just I don't know it just doesn't sound right because um, you know why is it that they can't get married till they buy a home see that sounds like a setup to me and if she had any sense at all especially if she's the one putting most of the money into it or all of the money into it she should make sure that his name is nowhere near the deed and you know, just kind of check things out because ma mainly what's going to happen is once they get married, so then he's going to be entitled to half the house, even if he didn't put in half the income to get it. So this this is a problem that I'm seeing when women get too caught up in the fact that they're, quote, going to get married and they start acting like they're already the wife. You know, this, this purchasing homes and property and all the stuff, that is something that you should only do when you have a spouse unless you have a contractual agreement and you guys are, you know, business partners, you formed a PLLC or something, well, then that's different. You have some corporate protections and uh, you have some legal recourse. But you just got a baby daddy living up in your house and, you know, half working and you doing most of the work, buying a prop, working a prop, writing a property and all this stuff, and he just chilling, talking about he working on his damn business. Well, no, 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 stop, whoa. You need to slow your roll, girlfriend. And it's nice that she, like I said, it's nice that she feels like she found love and all that. But you have to find love. You have to be smart about it. You can't just, you know, run willy-nilly just because somebody starts talking about getting married to you. Now, in the book, 
um, there's a section, a chapter right there. The entire chapter is called The Single Black Woman in Church. And um, underneath each title, I have like a explanation of the content. Let's put it that way. And this one says, Twisted courtship rituals have created several generations of black women terrified to ask for what they need or want in romantic relationships so they settle for whatever they can get. That's the introduction to this chapter. So in here, I also talk about... Um, how going to church, you know, or having, even if you don't go, most women, black folks have been raised with the church mindset. You know what I mean? There's a strong belief in some other spiritual entity called God, Jesus, whatever you want to call it, um, that is guiding your life unto which you pray for help, which pray for guidance and this kind of, and you pray for things to be brought to you. So I... You know, I I, I kind of get the feeling, even though it hasn't been said, that that is what's going on with her. She feels like, you know, she's going to be delivered to the mighty heavens because now she got she's going to have this husband where she didn't have one before. A lot of women are very, very anxious to be married. To them, it's like the pinnacle of success of their lives. It doesn't matter what professional achievements they have what personal achievements they have, what educational achievements they've accomplished. None of that really matters. It's, it, they're, they're looking more at who they're married to. Well, no, not even who. The fact that they're married at all. Let's put it that way. They hate the thought of being single. The, the thought that somebody would call them an old maid or, you know, want to tease them and, or talk about, well, when are you going to get married? You too picky. You this and They hate that, the idea of being put into that category. So um, in, in this chapter, I'm trying to find what, where to, I dropped the paper, the paper and now I can't find what it is I want to, um, what I wanted to talk about here. Hmm. <laughs> well, basically, I don't know, the book is long as hell to me, but, um, oh, here it is. Okay, this is the subsection called Why Independent Black Women Settle for Less. And in here, I kind of talk about how women are normally attracted to power and influence, right? But since there's so few men in church, the only one really with the power and the influence in the church is the pastor. So black women who like to go to church will tend to become too involved with what their pastor says, what their pastor thinks that they should do, what the pastor says that they should do, and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of focus on what I call churchianity versus, you know, the re actual tenets of the religion. And a lot of the women are just too giving. It's overly giving to men in what they call these help meet situations which are basically one-sided relationships so you know you you the ladies want to they want to avoid being called a gold digger so they make go to the great pains to prove to men that they're self-sufficient and they're able to provide for themselves and all of that but what they do is get men who, who underperform the women overperform and the men underperform and they use lots of different excuses uh, to justify not really stepping up. So, you know, these women talk about, well, you know, I'm an independent black woman and they wear that sh shit like it's a badge of honor. It's really not. I mean, if you're in a situation where you're married, you shouldn't have to be an independent black woman. The idea of a relationship like that where you get married, you're supposed to be, be dependent on each other and as independent from each other as you need to be, of course, to be sane. I'm not saying you, you know, turn into like one big old puddle of poop of some personhood, personage, but the idea is that if you have someone who you can't depend on, that you're constantly taking the reins because that person is incapable of taking them, that person is not really in a position to, to uh, hold up their end of the bargain, well then, why are you with that person? Now, in this particular case, you know, I don't know what his business is, so I'm not going to be that much of a, of a um, that harsh on him. I'm just talking about the concept, okay? So, before anybody, you know, gets their panties all in a wad, I'm not talking about this guy in particular. I'm talking about the stuff that you, in general, need to pay attention to 
when you're faced with a situation like this, okay? Now, as far as her bragging around at work, um, that, you know, could be sensitive. I mean, you have people who maybe they want to get married and something happened, or maybe they're going through a divorce and they're, you know, their feelings are, are already like on the surface and now here you are rubbing it, it's salt in their wounds that their marriage didn't work out. I mean, there's all kinds of, or maybe, you know, somebody is going to get married or they just got married and they couldn't afford a big fancy wedding like what she's talking about. And so that again is rubbing salt in their wounds and hurting people's feelings. These are matters that you really should not talk about on the job. If someone asks you, some of your, you know, they want to know a little bit about what's going on and you're like a good friend with that person talk about that shit at lunch you know go somewhere sit in your car or go to the corner of the cafeteria go to a restaurant or whatever you're gonna do and talk about your private and personal affairs off company time you should not be talking about that stuff in the open office where everyone can hear like it's just like talking about religion you know you or politics in the office you can't do that because you don't know what stance people have and it creates an environment that they call a hostile work environment. You can't do that. You can't do that. So whoever this woman's supervisor is needs to be alerted to what's going on and how it's making the other employees feel. Because like I said, there's many different ways that uh, people are gonna feel about this situation depending upon you know what their what their current situation is that does not mean that they're jealous so before everybody gets all stupid about that and everybody the default thing is what they jealous everybody ain't jealous of your bitch ass shut up with that shit oh they get some on my nerves but people have feelings like I said if they're going through divorce they're hurt they're hurting they're hurting for themselves they're hurting for their children they're hurting for the dreams and then here you are talking all this shit you know in your face and it's like you're in work so they can't get away from you they can't un they can't avoid hearing it because you're forcing it down their throats this this kind of thing on the job is extremely inappropriate I don't know how she's getting away with it for all these months that shit should have been squelched the first week and uh, her supervisor is the one who should have pulled her aside and told her um, to keep quiet about that kind of stuff you know talk about her wedding only when asked and the same with everybody else like you know people be pregnant right you don't hear them coming in talking every second about their damn baby it's like shit cats breed big kittens and puppies you know i mean so what you having a fucking baby big whoop de doo that ain't no accomplishment all you did was fuck i mean so <laughs> you know what i mean but it's like you don't need to come to work and talk about that kind of stuff that's only affecting your personal life all the time. If someone asks you or people crowd around your desk and they want to know, okay, then you can talk. But, you know, just to walk around, walk up to people and start talking about some shit that's going on in your personal life that don't have nothing to do with the J-O-B, you know, you need to keep your mouth shut. Be, be aware of the impact that your words can have in an environment where other people are forced to hear them who may not want to. Okay, they just may not want to and they have every right not to hear it. So you don't have any you don't have more of a right to talk about your personal off work stuff. So people say, well, you know, I had a right. No, you don't. What you're supposed to be talking about at work is work. Okay, and you who you married and what your your hall they found and your cake and all shit they don't have nothing to do with them, that company making money. So that's not that's not you don't have a right to do that on the job. You had a right to do that at your house. And that's where it needs to happen. This is Deb Cooper from survivingdating.com signing out.